heresies man the devil knows stuff so before we even released the message this morning on generational curses folks were sending me anti-generational curse stuff arguing against just saying there's no such thing as generational curses it's so dumb it's so dumb there's generational trauma that can be diagnosed by a psychologist and they'll tell you, oh, your daddy did something to you, and then you did the same thing to your child. That's generational trauma. Amen. Plain and simple. And you can go back through history and find some of the things that you're struggling with right now all in your family. Amen. And that's what witches and different ones attack. So this is why there is an uprising to say there's no such thing as general, generational curses because Jesus took all the curses, curses on the cross. Well, that would be the same as, as saying there's no such thing as generational sins. Because sin was destroyed. Right? But people going to sin. Amen. And so we understand. We teach a little different in here, but people that talk that talk, they're afraid of demons. That's what it is. So you just look at somebody and say, be careful. Be careful what comes across your feed and you done latched on to some teacher. And you don't, you know, can I just be honest? I'm going to be. I'm so sick of this. I'm really sick of folks wanting microwave messages. You want a you wanna full sermon as quick as you can make some popcorn in the microwave. It takes time to learn. And it takes longer to be taught. Amen. The Bible tells us that the greatest teacher of all times was no microwave teacher. Paul wasn't a microwave teacher. And he was the greatest teacher that ever lived. The Bible said he taught so long folks was falling asleep. One dude fell asleep and fell through the roof. My thing is, you shouldn't have been up there no way. You should have been inside. What you scared of? Fell down and died. And Paul brought him back to life. Now you sit here and listen to the rest. <laughs> no microwave you know who wanted the microwave message the scribes and the Pharisees they walk up to him and say hey man you know uh, 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 Jesus what about this what about this and they want quick answers and Jesus just gave them smart answers but if you really want to hear my teaching I'll be over at the mount at 4 o'clock come around the mount I'll be over there about 4 service gonna last about 2 hours but I'm gonna break all of this down Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I'm going to break it all down. It's going to take me some time because it can't be quick. When it's quick, it's left to the interpretation of the person. The word has to be rightly divided, and that takes time. Oh, generation. <laughs> you can't, don't let them do it to you. And then I get the questions. Well, pastor, what about this? Well, listen, on Sunday, Amen. I'm going to talk about it for a whole hour. Amen. And a minute, 30 seconds isn't long enough. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we need information. So this generation, they just watched that, and now these guys are just putting it all over there. Generational curse is a lie, and that's a charismatic Pentecostal thing and it's not really real there's no proof in the Bible of a gen so that's a that makes it a generational that makes it heresy so that's why I named this generational heresy they call the generational heresy actually generational curses but I'm flipping it and we're gonna talk about the heresy of lying against the generational curse you know, if you ain't cast no demon out and a demon called itself an old one and blew that old Sumerian breath on you, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. I've had them do it. I'm an old ancient one. And I said, yes, the, the breath. Hence the breath. And it does. It smells like hell and sulfur. Yeah. 
And I mean, and they'll tell you, I'm from this, I'm from that. And I'm not saying you got to believe everything a demon say, because they do lie. They lie, because it's a demon, right? But some stuff about them is truth. Yeah, some of the things they say is true. And I've had them tell me that they're old, that they're ancient, that they've been going through this family for years. Yeah. Yeah. That one had a girl, woo. She, um, we was praying for her, and, and all of a sudden, the back of her head hit the back of her knees. And she folded up like a taco, standing up backwards. I don't know if you was in there. You remember that? Yeah. And she said she was an old one. We said, how you get in? She said, her mother's a pastor. Mother's out of order. Let her in. Yeah, manifested in the youth room. And then all of a sudden, the whole youth room began to smell. Didn't it? Just, I mean, people just had to walk out the smell of that old one in her. Yeah, I mean, you know, so all these dudes that just pop up with these little blurbs, man, they can't be, they can't. Brother, have you dealt with a demon? Amen. These kind of messages. The message last week riled a demon up in here. Amen. Cussing and acting a fool in the church. Had to get him out of here. Yeah, it's just, it just, it just happens because you ain't interrupting the service. Amen. I, I, I believe in demons, but I believe that they shouldn't interrupt the service. You're not going to stop other people. That's what they like to do. Stop other people from getting hurt. All right, then he run over there with the mic. What's your name? And all that. No, nah, bro, I don't even know your name. I don't even know how, where you came from, how you got in there. Don't interrupt this service. Y'all take that outside. Amen. Amen. We got some folk that'll work on you out there, but you're not interrupting this service. If God is speaking. If God is speaking, then the demon is being rude and disrespectful. If you believe it's God speaking. How many of you came for a word from the Lord? You didn't come for a word from no man. You came for a word from the Lord. Amen. And this is serious business. Yes, sir. And we're in the end times. Things, the stakes are higher now. Amen. Devil's coming for your seed. Yes, He's coming for your born and unborn children. Yes, your future husband and wife. He's trying to mess you up so you'll never meet them. But God is all powerful. He's gonna make it, He gonna make it happen regardless. Well, you better watch what you're doing. Amen. Yes, sir. Or you making it harder on yourself. Can I keep preaching in here? Folk don't like this, boy. Yeah, they call it a myth. Many teachers today believe that a person cannot be influenced by the actions of their predecessors. Now that's just stupid. That is really stupid. When my dad used to walk, my daddy was 6'2", and wore suit. he, he might have wore suits to bed. <laughs> my dad would be walking around the house in a suit. That's all he wore. And you know, I've always kind of dressed down, dressed like this. I have suits. Y'all see me in other functions. I, you know, I can do that. I can do it. <laughs> That's nice stuff. I can, I can drip. Izzy looked at me, see, uh, I, I didn't use it right, okay. Uh, he looked at me like. <laughs> ah! Well, I can. But, <laughs> so, <laughs> I used to watch my dad, and so when I was young, I used to go in the closet, put his shoes on, and practice walking like him in the house. Yeah. Because that's the way he walked. And my dad didn't walk with his neck down. All 6'2 was upright. And he always walked like that. Whether he was walking to church, whether he was walking to his job, he just walked like a man. Yes, Amen. My daddy would have that suit on. On his way to a revival, somebody call him and need their air condition fixed. What would he do? He'd take that jacket off, get up in there with the church shoes, church fix that air, put that jacket back on, and go and preach. 
Yeah, that's what he did. So his work ethic, that's all I saw. I saw my dad down sick maybe twice in my whole life, not at work. So his work ethic got in me. You gonna tell me that that, that wasn't passed down to me? You gonna tell me, now what if he had been a drunk? What if he had been abusing my mama? She'd have whooped him. <laughs> he knew better than that. <laughs> Word on the street is <laughs> that mother and that Sabatha, them, them the two you just don't want to tussle around with. Not even in jest. We don't even play tussle. I did that like once. It wasn't fun. I didn't know she was that strong. We ain't doing this again. I might lose. Then I gotta divorce you. It's <laughs> a fact, so let me just, let's, let's don't even <laughs> But yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, he passed the good stuff on to me. Used to watch him preach, no matter how he felt, he'd get up and preach. I'd be on the organ, but I would be missed, uh, not mystified, yes I would, I'd be mystified by just watching him. Watching how much energy he had after working an eight hour shift. He get up there and he was hooping. You know how tiring hooping is. They only gotta take a, a, a week off after. <laughs> he don't feel it till he get home. <laughs> Man, that's tiring. <laughs> I'll tell you when we did the I got a feeling message. I, I think I saw stars for about three, four days. I said, but I can't do this. My daddy get up there and do that, preach, jump on the chairs, walk the pews. He was everywhere after eight hours. And I watched that. You don't think I learned from that? Watching his endurance. So just think if he had been walking in the crack house and I was watching him. That would influence my behavior. I'd still have to make a choice and I still have to have to give an account to the Lord. Amen. But it's going to affect me generationally. Yeah. Amen. Exodus 3 and 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of who? Abraham, the God of who? Isaac and the God of who? Now, why did these guys do what God, why did they respect what God told Abraham? Because Abraham was their father. They learned how to worship God through Abraham. They learned how to give up anything. God says give up because of Abraham. And it kept going to Isaac and then to Jacob and all the way to Jesus. Because some father stayed the course. Amen. They believe generational curses, these new folks, are non-existent because Jesus defeated all curses on the cross. Jesus did defeat all curses, but you got to bring your curse to him for it to be defeated. Galatians 3 and 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. And for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So he became a curse for us so that we don't have to take the penalty of the law. But we still can take the penalty of the law if our faith is in the law. So if you black Hebrew Israeliting and trying to hide in here, that's why we're going to light up that area over there. I want to see you. Yeah, you Hebrew Israeliting, then you bringing the curse of the law back onto yourself. You can't be redeemed by Christ and the law. You have to take Christ's redemption or the law's redemption. Can I keep preaching in here? But did Jesus come to destroy the works of the devil on the cross as well? Wasn't that a part of it? Didn't he come to destroy the works of the devil? Then why is the devil still working? Talk about it. Yes, 
So if you're going to say there's no generational curses because the curses are, uh, are, are, were taken on the cross and they're gone, well, then there's no works of the devil because the works of the devil were destroyed with the cross. Amen. So how is the devil still working? Look at somebody and say, make it make sense. Brother, what is going on? First John 3 and 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might what? So he destroyed the works of the devil. But the devil is still working. Hmm. The devil never abandoned his plan. To infect us all with emotional turmoil to hinder our lives. He never abandoned it. Even though Jesus, what Jesus did, you still have to contend with the devil. Jesus did it for all of us, but we got to call on him when we are engaging Satan. If you're a real believer, you're going to have to engage the devil. Jesus did. The devil followed, took him up to a mountain and began to talk to him. And Jesus had to confront him and deal with him. And you're going to have to too. Yeah. You're going to have to contend with the devil. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and what? So yeah, we claim salvation. But the thief is still acting. Yeah. The devil's not fully defeated yet. Yeah. He will be. But you have to fully defeat him in your life. Amen. Amen. So all of this old, I, you know, I don't know who these people are that, that's against, the, they're saying there's no generational curse. That, not, I mean, nothing bad ever happens to them. I'm like, man, so you've lived perfect since you've been saved. Didn't he save you from sin? So have you sinned since you've been saved? How did you do that if you were saved from sin? I have questions because <laughs> it don't make sense. Y'all need to quit listening to everything. Amen. Y'all make it hard for me to pastor you because you got too many voices popping up on your feet. Amen. Making you unsure about what you're hearing, doubting, which leads to unbelief. Jesus died to give us the power to overcome the devil, but not without a fight. The power to overcome the devil, but not without a fight. You got to, look at somebody say, you have to fight. Anybody that's not fighting, lost. Yeah, you already lost if you're not fighting. If you're fighting, then you're on the right track. Amen. If you're struggling, you're on the right track. But if you've given in, you just gave in. Fight's over. You lost. Amen. Jesus did his part. He made it possible for you to win the fight. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against what? So this is after Jesus had died and rose again. So why is Paul telling you to put on the whole arm of God if the devil is defeated? If you won, don't you take the armor off? That's a part of the victory celebration. So why is he said put it on so you can stand against what the devil's going to do? How is the devil going to do it if he's defeated? These folk have a bad understanding. And that's why you need a pastor to help you divide the word Amen. rightly. Amen. Make it make sense. Amen. Yeah, 
the wiles of the devil. He's still operating. And Jesus is going to come and finish him off. But he's not totally finished. Jesus just gave us the ability to finish him in our lives. Amen. Transgenerational trauma. It's a real thing. From the grandmother to the mother to the daughter. Real thing. Same with grandfather. Father, son. Same thing. Yeah, you will repeat the behaviors. You know, they like to say, man, a high blood pressure run in your family. Well, it, it, it does. That's true. But it's not a bloodline thing. It's, I mean, it's not a blood thing. It's not a DNA thing. It's a habit thing. So the habits run in your family. You inherited the habits. Great grandmother made a 10 inch tall sweet potato pie with big, big sweet, whole sweet potatoes in it. Whole yams, whole yams in it. Got to be tall for a whole yam to be in it. Standing upright. And she weighed the yams, however much she weighs, the sugar got to weigh the same. Sound good? <laughs> you so jack. What? <laughs> Jay Bryan. <laughs> that sound good. Yeah, I mean, fought the bees off to get the honey. She stung a thousand times. But oh, it's going to taste good. And she would make that pie, sit it on the stove before the night is over. Everybody had some. Can't nobody move the next day. In a coma. <laughs> yeah. And then she passed that recipe down <laughs> to your wife. Oh, won't you go in there and make more malls? <laughs> Make mall <maw> malls. <laughs> yeah. Then you bring the daughter in there. Come watch me make this. <laughs> you gonna be married one day. <laughs> yeah. Everybody got high blood pressure. It don't have to be food, it can just be behavior. Yeah. Diabetes running your family. Nah, bruh. Anybody that eats like your family gonna have a high hemoglobin. They don't have nothing to do with your DNA. That's habits. You're not gonna tell me that if you practice better health habits, you won't have a better health situation. Can I preach in here, see, once you go to attacking the food? Folks, just wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, the meringue don't have to touch the ceiling. Ceiling fan knocking meringue all over the kitchen. Come on, the pot don't have to be that tall. You don't use, that's why there's an egg shortage. You use 100 eggs just to make the top. You know, in the Bible, they had feasts. They celebrated every now and then. They didn't eat like that every day. Only eat one slice a night. See, that's how I do it. See, it's bad when you try to eat it all. I eat one slice a night. That's horrible. You got to die. Can't eat a slice a night. I cut it with a samurai sword. It's so tall. Just... Yeah, that's 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 running it. That's what's running in your. Tell the doctor that. You know, ain't, ain't nobody ever telling the doctor that, brother. It looks like uh, it's it's running in your family. No pig feet running my family. Big pots of pig feet running the family. Pigs stop running in my family because we take their feet. They can't run. 
can't run. Ain't no pig running in my field. We take the feet. <laughs> I remember back when I used to cook pig feet. My, now my pig feet was bald, okay? I call myself going to try to make them more healthy by soaking them. No, I soak them in vinegar. I put all vinegar, no water. I don't use water in my pig feet. All vinegar, that gets the fat out. That was my philosophy. I couldn't figure out why. I would still slow down after I ate them. Everything would just get real slow. Mama, is that you? <laughs> Some stuff you just should never eat. Amen. The pie every now and then. But, hey, them pig feet, throw that out. <laughs> Amen. Look at somebody. <laughs> Pastor, you know, this is where I have to go with the minute 30-second messages because <laughs> they speak better about the pig. <laughs> Amen. But it's transgenerational trauma. Generational curses are a part of the fight. And they exist because of the actions, choices, teachings, and behavior of those that raised us. Yeah. Oh, that just made sense. They exist because of, and they're going to keep existing because of your actions, even now, what you choose to do, because you chose to get off your couch or your bed in your underwear us and get dressed and come to church. Some folk just want to watch church like that. Feet propped up, Bucket of chicken. Preach, preacher. Oh, this, oh, I got to send this to my cousin. This dude right here. He be praying. I got to send this. Oh, I got to send this to my coworkers. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, but because you decide we waking up, we getting dressed. We're going to go where there's human energy. We're going to go and get around some human beings. Not only human beings, but like-minded human beings that believe the word like I do. They believe the truth like I do. They believe that Jesus is the only way like I do. They ain't in no old one minute and 30 second foolishness. They know the word. They're getting taught the word. So we go, I'm going to expose my family to this Sunday after Sunday and watch my children. When they get old enough, they're they going to be right here beside me. They're not going to abandon it. They're not going to leave it. Train up a child in a way that he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. Just from that example. I'm not going to just show up, but I'm going to be dedicated. Because I believe there's power in the gathering of the saints. I have no buffet on the TV. I mean, you know, I don't want to hear him this week. Let me see right there. Oh, this door. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. Oh, drop that. Yeah. Like, where did that come from? One pandemic, and now all of a sudden, that's okay? That's okay. It wasn't okay to us at ABC during the pandemic. We ain't doing that. I'm going to be with my brothers and sisters. I don't care what they say is going on out there. And if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. Yeah, I got that kind of faith. When did that become okay? Yeah, but your actions, your choices, your teachings. You sit at home with your children and tell them that's okay. When they grow up, not only are they not going to go to church, but they ain't going to watch it online either. Because they see it didn't do nothing to motivate you. Mark 3 and 27. Oh, I'm preaching in here. That's 
No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods unless he first bind the strong man. That tells you right there it's generational. He got to get the head before he can mess with the rest of the body. But except he first bind the strong man, then he will spoil the man's house. That's generational. It begins with the man standing in the doorway of his home and saying, not in this house. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, not in my house. You know, but you don't want this stuff to be spiritual. You want it to be psychological. That's the problem. They want it to be psychological. You can't psych out the devil. He'll take his pitchfork and jab it in your chest. You know who you messing with. <laughs> Gonna psych out the devil. <laughs> oh, that's the devil. It's only one way to fight him. With the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty to God for the pulling down of strongholds. So I want to hear your philosophy. Well, see, if this is this, then this must be. No, no, brother, you ain't been in no spiritual warfare where you've had to call stuff out in your prayer. You've had to call stuff out of yourself. So you ain't been there. You ain't been there. When you look behind you and say, man, I've been on the wrong path. I got to get this right. Yes, sir. See, ain't no hand claps. Everybody in here, see? No, man, that's spiritual warfare. Ooh. Yeah, that's what's watching you when you're in them yoga poses. I don't need nobody. Somebody came to see yoga. Now, nah, brother, you're wrong on the yoga. Shut up! You cast Cali out of somebody before? You seen a woman reaching and junk like she got six arms? Why you praying for her? Shut up. I don't know what you talking about. I seen it all. Experienced it all and had to deal with it all. So I can't come in there with no philosophy. Have the devil laughing at me. So I done read the Joel Osteen book of harmless preaching. brother no no kindness and niceness and trying to preach a message where no feathers get ruffled brother no we don't that, that ain't this kind of church amen I need my feathers ruffled pluck them out if they're not like the Lord I don't want them feathers demons are real and they can be summoned, conjured, and invoked into a family through many different ways. You know what the Lord showed me, Elder, the other day? I said, when I, I, I actually typed this, and the Lord spoke to me right after and said, that's what the ancestral prayers are. All of a sudden, the ancestors are relevant, especially in the African-American community. You go through all the young ladies' pages and on Instagram and all of they all talking to the ancestors. They telling you to talk to the ancestors. They're smudging and, and saging and crystalline and all this junk. But their main focus is the ancestral plane. Well, what is there? A curse. They're opening their family up to an ancestral curse. They're bringing curses into the millennia on themselves. Nobody you know praying to the ancestors is right in their mind. Look at them. They look crazy. Crazy. I'm like, brother, that's not working right. Sister, you need to quit talking to them things. Look at you. I mean, tatted all up everywhere, pierced all up everywhere, then showing that raggedy body all the time. <laughs> Just a hot, stir-fried mess. I mean, I ain't trying to talk about, yes, I am. They are a mess. Ain't nothing good about it. You're depressed. 
Because you brought some old junk in that you can't get free from. So demons are real and they can be summoned, conjured, invoked into a family through many different ways. Galatians 5, 19 and 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. These is where the spirits come in. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, and see heresies. That's the one we talking about now. You teaching a heresy. Saying that there are no generational curses and the devil is behind you clapping. Thank you for saying that. Now you won't recognize me. Thank you for saying that. Now you just disabled yourself from dealing with me. You can't contend with something you don't believe in. So if you don't believe, the devil like, I got an open door. I go in and out this family for the rest of their family's life on this earth. Because nobody's going to deal with what they don't believe is there. Yeah. That's why he said heresies right here. Envians, murders, drunkenness, revelings, revelings. You know what reveling is? Partying. Partying to bring a spirit in your house. Going to the club. Amen. Dropping it like it's hot. It's going to really be hot. You ain't felt hot yet. That's a reveling. He said, and such like of the which I tell you before, also, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Is that not plain and simple? Then why aren't they preaching that? Folks don't preach that because, well, you know, I used to get a little drunk. Well, denounce it. Denounce it, repent, and stop doing it. It doesn't mean that a generational curse came after you did every one of these, but you need to check and make sure. Yeah. Amen. Lord, did anything come over my family when I was out reveling at the Cliff Club? <laughs> yeah. Drunkenness, all of these things. Envying. When I was jealous of the person in the church. And I used to talk about them and stuff. Lord, did anything come up on my family from that? I repent from that. Forgive me, Lord. I keep my mouth off of folks. I'll be content with what you have given me. These are generational curses. And they keep going until somebody stops it. Our free will gives us opportunity. To open up ourselves and our bloodlines to certain things if we are not careful. The devil walks around believers trying to find a way into their bloodlines. He don't just want you. And some of y'all, you too old. He don't want you at all. He wants you to do something to mess your kids up. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil... As a roaring lion walketh about doing what? Now who was Peter talking to? The world? He tell the world to be sober. They're supposed to be drunk. He's talking to believers saying, be sober, you be vigilant. Because your adversary is the devil. Well, I thought the devil was defeated. Your adversary, the devil. And he's Acting like a roaring lion walking about seeking, looking for somebody to eat. Looking for somebody to mess up. Are we all not victims of divorce, neglect, abuse, or the errors, mistakes, and choices of those before us? Are these same behaviors in some cases passed down by the emotions and behavior of people? So you're a victim of it, but then it was passed down. And you're doing what you were a victim of. What do you call that? Then why is it so hard to believe that a generational behavior in a family can be initiated by witchcraft, 
summoning or rituals or some other ungodly act. Yeah. Now, if you pledge Freemasonry, the firstborn of your family is given up. So that means their life is filled with death. All of these pledges, any pledge to false gods, anything is going to bring forth something in your family. And you'll experience all of the perks of that organization while cursing your family at the same time. That's the trade-off. I mean, if you want to be a Hollywood movie star actor, you got to kill somebody or somebody's got to die. You got to give somebody up. There has to be a blood sacrifice. You gonna be a famous singer or something? You gotta do something homosexual. Something. Something. If that's what you wanna be and you wanna be big. Bible calls the devil the god of this world. That's his territory. Yeah. I got it in Hollywood. So that's what I'm saying. You gotta give it up. So once you do that, you changed. Your family. Amen. The dynamics of your family shifted. And you've given the devil permission to pursue your family. And you owe it to him. That's why nobody gets out. Name them. Who got out? Who got out? Who got out of the entertainment industry? Who got out? Who? Who? Smokey Robinson got out. No, he didn't. He got a video. He 97. And he up there cruising together. He a hundred. Just cruise. Say, bro. And the sad part is he sounded like that when he was 20. It don't, it don't take much. No matter how old his vocal cords get, they can still do that. <laughs> and he dancing. I saw him dance. Brother, I saw your TBN. You said you got out. Where MC Hammer? You got to pray just to make. Where is he? I thought he got out. On a walker. <laughs> Brother, he ain't got out. You don't get out. Nobody getting out. Don't get out, man. Can't name nobody that got out. They don't get out. Oh, and then they text me and email me and I hear from them. We were just talking about one dude who was on the Nickelodeon show contacting me. Oh, he saved and all that. He back. They got him. You ain't going nowhere. Why is it so hard, though, to believe that generational behavior in a family can be initiated by witchcraft and all these other things? Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's why you can't use psychology and philosophy, because it's not flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities. Principalities. Principalities are real. Principalities are real. America got under a principality when they uh, let Roe versus Wade happen. We got under Molik, who is the god of abortion. Then it got overturned a few years ago, remember that? But remember all the witches and stuff that gathered around the White House and all that and began to pray or whatever? They prayed Molik back to govern America. Then all of a sudden, all the young girls start getting the nose piercing, the, the, the septum piercing. It's like, what is that? That's Molik. That's what a bull, bull wears. A ring in his nose. That's not an accidental fashion. That's spiritual. That's a principality. You don't understand principalities, man. You don't know what you're dealing with. This is next level stuff. Yeah, when yoga first got popular in America, everybody was getting the belly button ring. That became popular. Why? Because that's Cali. That's... that's it, it, from uh, Eastern mysticism. They would open up the belly button, 
as a, you know, spiritual sign to allow spirits to come in when they do the yoga poses. And I preach this stuff and man, little ladies and girls in the audience would just fall out and scream and all this kind of stuff. And the devil would be like, hmm, how you know that? Now the Holy Spirit told me. Yeah. And that ain't to show you me, that shows you the power of God. What we dealing with. Principalities are real. They govern areas. Then I keep preaching in here. That's how principalities work. So he said, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against powers. Against rulers of what? The darkness. So the darkness of this world has a ruler. <laughs> and you got to contend with him. And then against spiritual wickedness where? In government. Oh, I mean, all of us in here are one bank collapse from not having anything. You don't think they know that? It's going to take, man, it's going to take warfare. We got to pray against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness. I don't need nobody telling me, well, see, brother, they're not, shut up. This is spiritual warfare. Got to keep preaching in here. I feel like I've been. Because our fight is spiritual, we must break the power of these spiritual entities that have been allowed to influence the behaviors of our family members. Yeah, folks ain't just watching the latest rapper and decided to decorate themselves like that. I see them and I don't want to look like that. But some kid looks at it and says, oh yeah, I'm combing my hair just like that. Somebody opened the door in his family. I can watch folk playing with crystals all day long and I'm not touching any of them. But some little girl, the door was opened in her family. She see the crystal. Mark 3 and 15. And to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. That's what God has given us. Well, why we got to cast out devils if the devil has been defeated? Summary! Those that claim generational curse teachings are heretical are looking for the phrase to be specifically used in the Bible. Well, smoking ain't used in the Bible, but we know you ain't supposed to be hitting it. <laughs> Amen. Passing it. But they fail to understand how demons, powers, and principalities operate. The works of the flesh are committed by people. No, the works of the flesh that are committed by people can bring spirits into them, and these spirits change their behaviors and cause them to do evil to others. These same behaviors are passed down and taught to their children in some instances. The same spirit is passed through their family because of behaviors and what? Emotions. emotions. Ooh, that's why you got to get your emotions together. Because the way you feel is the way you act. And the way you act is going to change your children. The same spirit is passed through their family because of behaviors and emotions. I've seen demons come through Ouija boards tarot readings, horoscopes, etc. This new movie coming out, Dungeons and Dragons, don't you dare take your children to go see that. I used to cast, I used to have to pray for kids that were stuck in the upside down from playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, that's a wicked game. And you can lose your soul in that game. I 
I've seen demons come through this stuff and they have a lasting effect on a family until someone breaks it. Tarot readings. Don't you let nobody read you. They're not reading you. They're not reading you. You know what they're doing? They're gaining your confidence. They're opening you up. Because there's somebody with them that wants to get in you. You saw the picture of the, the girl in front of the big, that, that thing is with them. Looking for a way into you. So they call out your life by talking to other demons, gain your confidence, and then put something in you. They know who you are when you walk up. And here's the thing. They know whether you are a strong Christian or a weak one. They're not afraid of weak Christians, but they ain't going to mess with a strong Christian, Brother Herman. I've had it happen to me. I walked up to one of them. She was handing out papers. She said, here, here you go. Uh, she's handing out papers advertising her business. And she had handed out, handed out so many till she stopped looking up. So she just looking down, handing them out. So I'm going to go up there and just get one. I mean, I wasn't trying to test nothing. I just wanted to get it. So I'm, this was at the bazaar over in Dallas. And she just handed them out. And I reached. And she did this. <laughs> Snatched it without even looking at me. And she looked up. I said, I can't have one. She said, you don't want this. You Christian. I said, oh, yeah. Well, praise his name. Thank you. Thank you for knowing who I was. Amen. 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 They know. And they know what you know. They know if you're living off of a minute and 30 second messages. <laughs> Most of them are in the messages. <laughs> Causing confusion. God is not the author of confusion. You confused? They can have a lasting effect on the family until someone breaks it. Now, understand, I'm not giving, I'm not saying generational curses are all powerful. They're just like any other curse. They got to be dealt with. I'm just saying it has to be broken. Amen. It's going to have power until somebody breaks it. Is it breakable? Yes. That's why we're in here. Yes, Most of us were victims of a generational curse and we were able to break it. That's why we're in here. Jesus' blood must be applied to these situations and strongholds. Sure, he came to break our curses. But we must apply his blood from his death and his power from his rising. This is spiritual warfare and it's not for the faint in heart. So go to the mega church and hide. And you won't have to deal with any of this. The devil will leave you alone if you leave him alone. So leave him alone. He won't bother you. You know, if you leave them alone, you're going to hell. Because <laughs> you got to be able to rebuke him to go to heaven. This is spiritual warfare, and it's not for the faint at heart. Even after we are saved, we sin. Oh, look at somebody. Well, <laughs> no evil have I done. You're a lie. After you save, you have sin. Anybody in here has not sinned since they've been saved? Raise your hand. And see, folks, as soon as you say sin, they think, well, I ain't killed nobody. <laughs> yes, you did, with your mouth. Amen. Yeah, the Bible calls you a murderer for hating your brother. Amen. You don't have to be at the ju joint shooting dice to sin. That's what they think is sin. No, you sinning in your own heart by the way you're treating people. By the things you saying. Amen. Yeah, so we all sin. Hey, Jesus wouldn't have had a reason to die if we could live perfect like he did. He lived perfect to redeem us from sin. Only one could do that. There is none righteous. No, not one. None of us. He's the only righteous one. So, even after we, we're saved, we sin. Does that mean that Jesus didn't destroy sin? No. no, it means that our free will can still choose evil even after salvation. Yeah. 
Well, that also means that we can still be affected by the sins of others. <laughs> After salvation. And be influenced by generational curses as well. Look at somebody say, it's all a choice. It's all a choice. That's what made God's people his people. Israel was his people because of the choices they made. Because when they made the choice to no longer be with him or follow his leadership, he opened up the ground and swallowed them up in the hell. Amen. They decided to go with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram instead of listening to Moses. The Bible said the ground opened up, swallowed them up. They thought they had it made. We God's people. Can't nothing bad happen to us. You God's people because you choose to obey him. His love is always there. His hand is always there. But you can deny it. It's all a choice. So we must apply the blood of Jesus continuously. So that we can remain free from all the wiles of the devil. Amen. Amen. Second Peter 2 and 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privately shall bring in what? Damnable heresies. Damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that brought them. Yeah. And bring upon themselves what? Swift destruction. Swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So the ones preaching the truth are evil spoken of. But the ones with the lies are celebrated. They got all the internet likes and hits. <laughs> but when you preach the truth, amen, you're evil spoken of. Everyone stand to your feet. Generational heresy, so... What I want to pray for today, what I want to, I, I just want to pray that you don't get confused. We're going to pray against the spirit of confusion. Especially when you got a father or a grandfather or somebody that got into a strange belief system and started believing something weird or whatever. And you feel that trickling down trying to get on you. And you're getting a little confused or you just don't want to be confused. I want to be able to, when I'm on the internet or whatever, I don't want none of this stuff getting in my head and, and confusing me about what God wants to do in my life and what I truly believe. Amen. Amen. So if, if, if you want prayer for that, just come on up where you can just make your stand here in 2023. I'm going to stand strong on what it is I believe and I'm just not going, I'm not going to be led astray by what is being said. And a lot of times it's real hard when it comes to family because you got your dad believing this, your mom believing this, you got kin folks over here believing this, you got relatives in the witchcraft, you got relatives in the this and that. You want them to see the kids and play with the kids, and man, when the, when they grab the kid, they put a crystal around their neck. God, ah, look at it. You're just like, man, what am I supposed to do here? Well, you need the power of the Holy Ghost to operate. Let me tell you something. If you truly believe what you believe and the power of God is on your life, folks will start leaving you alone. Because you are, up, you are upsetting the chemistry in their houses when you bring the Holy Spirit's power in there. And that's, what you, that's the way you want to be, man. You want the devil to recognize you. You want him to know who you are. Yeah. So we're going to pray and trust God for our families and, man... Cast out all this heresy, false teaching. Oh, the internet, Lord. You know who made the internet. Oh, I told y'all in part. Which video was that? Uh, Social esteem. Yeah, the same people that made CERN. Because it's the same thing. Yeah. But we're going to trust God that our stand is going to remain. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this powerful message. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you, God, 
for being the God of all gods, king of all kings. Thank you for your son dying and giving us power over the devil. Power to tread on serpents, power to cast out devils, power to heal the sick. All of those things, God. Power to speak things, to say things, to discern things. To move in the spirit realm and not be taken advantage of by the enemy. And Father, we pray right now that you will heighten our senses spiritually. Make us sensitive, God, to what we shouldn't see, what we shouldn't hear, what we shouldn't receive, what we shouldn't allow to come into our minds, our hearts, what we shouldn't just sit and entertain. Father God, make us hypersensitive. God, that some things we'll just turn off. Some things we just got to get away from. Some places we can't, I just can't do it because it's not agreeing with the one that resides in me. God, make us sensitive. Bring that sensitivity back, God. Lord God, so we won't just fall for everything we hear. We, God won't entertain it. We won't listen to certain folks. We'll just shut it off. Father God, help us in these areas, God, so we can make a stand in this last hour. And Father, help us, God, to stand against all heresy, anything that's not biblical, all the latest trends and all the latest uh, popular sayings and everything that the Internet is, 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 is uh, drawing likes and views, all of those different things that it's drawing, all of those things, God, protect us from it. Protect our ear gate, our eye gate. Protect us, Lord. So we won't see what we shouldn't see. And we won't hear what we shouldn't hear. In the name of Jesus. And help us, God, to stand strong for our families. Help us to stand in the doorway of our home. And protect our families from anything generational, ancient, no matter how old it is, wherever it came from, however it got there. Help us, Father God, to protect our children. Even our unborn children, for single people in here, protect the womb of these young ladies. Protect the seed of these young men. Father God, protect them from the wiles of the devil, from these witches, from these ancestral workers. In the name of Jesus. And God, will give you glory and honor. Come on, lift your hands up. We give you glory and honor even now. We give you glory and honor because you're smarter than the devil and you're smarter than the kingdom of darkness. And we thank you for giving us the light of your word, the truth of your word, and planting us in this place. And we give you glory and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hug somebody. Say, I'm not listening to the devil. Come on, say, I'm not listening to the devil. Hallelujah. I'm not listening to the devil. Turn him off. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may go back to your seats. Come on, on your way to your seat. Hug some different folk. Tell them, say, man, hey, I'm not listening to the heresies of the devil are listening. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen.